subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button people have to live in in unity we are still in transition civil society has been decimated of course we rely on media and i think the government has not done enough the international community has failed to respond no place in the world is perfect the yoga event is held here severe injustice and they should be stopped we should raise our voices condemn this uh, brutal act Hello viewers welcome to Newsweek South Asia a show that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nation let's begin with the headlines first Pakistan army aggravates cross border shelling at the LOC to facilitate infiltration dreaded terrorist said Salahuddin works on payroll for Pakistan's inter services intelligence and roadside bomb in Kabul targets of Khan vice president Pakistan army and its sponsored terrorists are taking advantage of covid-19 pandemic and continue to carry out attacks in India's Jammu and Kashmir the aim seems to use violence as medium to create fear psychosis among the residents however Indian security forces are alert to successfully avert any untoward incidents by terrorists that affect the peace and tranquility in the Union territory. Our report. Taking advantage of mountain range and intense jungles, the Pakistan army has been violating ceasefire along the line of control in Jammu and Kashmir. The shelling from across the border is severely hurting the villagers living on the border. Pakistan has violated ceasefire over 3200 times this year so far. In 2019, Pakistan had violated the truce deal 3168 times while the number was 1629 in 2018. Villagers say they are scared because of regular ceasefire violations by the Pakistan army. धारा 370 जम्मू कश्मीर से हटाया गया तब से जो पाकिस्तान है बुखला गया है और आए दिन जो भारतीय चौकियों को तो निशाना बनाता है साथ साथ जो यहाँ के जो सिविल लोग हैं उनको भी निशाना बनाता है तो लोग जो हैं हमारे बहुत यहाँ डरे हुए हैं The aim of ceasefire violations by Pakistan army is also to provide a cover to terrorists to infiltrate into Jammu and Kashmir. Since the abrogation of Article 370 on August 5, 2019, Pakistan is frustrated as Kashmiri separatists are cornered and anti-India propaganda in the Union territory is almost broken down. Ceasefire violations by Pakistan are indicative of an act of desperation by the Pakistan military. The Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir is fast returning to normalcy as it existed before the onset of terrorism in the mid 80s. This has been made possible through the elimination of a large number of terrorists, especially the terrorist leadership. For Pakistan, the only way to keep the fires burning in Kashmir is by sending in more terrorists. and to do so they need to divert the attention of indian troops who are guarding the border by cross border firing to assist the terrorists in getting through many dreaded terrorists who were operating at the behest of pakistan are already eliminated by the indian security forces indian intelligence agencies are also working in a coordinated manner to bust the hideouts of terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir. Recently, security forces recovered a cache of arms and ammunition during a search operation at the line of control in North Kashmir's Baramulla district. It includes two M16 rifles, two pistols, four magazines of M16 rifle and four pistol magazines. 
ये जनरल एरिया खनेतर टॉप जो है वहाँ पे ये ऑपरेशंस लॉन्च किया था और ड्यूरिंग सर्च हमें काफ़ी असला और बारूद जो है वो बरामद किया गया है इसमें दो पिस्टल्स हैं उनके साथ चार मैगजीन्स हैं और पचास राउंड हैं एक एक के पाँच जो हैं वो मैगजीन्स हैं दो सौ सत्तर राउंड हैं चार चाइनीज़ ग्रनेड हैं दो जो हैं वो वायरलेस सेट हैं एक बाइनाकुलर है और इसके साथ जो एक एच का जो ऑफिशियल जो उनका पैम्पलेट है वो भी इसमें हमें मिला है The newly formed Union Territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh are witnessing rapid development since the abrogation of Article 370 and 35A. The prevailing peace and development has frustrated Pakistan and now it is trying all possible means to unleash chaos and violence in the region. Since its inception, Pakistan remains a safe haven for dreaded terrorists who have been responsible for carrying out terror attacks in India. Unfortunately, Islamabad has long been denying its active involvement for sponsoring these terrorists. A recent document accessed by Indian Security Agency has exposed Pakistan's ugly reality which shows that Hizbul Mujahideen chief Said Salahuddin not only enjoys complete freedom at the behest of Pakistani establishment but also serves as bona fide official of Pakistan's inter-services intelligence. A report. These visuals are the chilling reminder of the patronage that the terrorists receive in Pakistan. This man enjoying a VIP treatment from Pakistan's establishment is Sayyid Salahuddin, the supreme commander of Hezbollah Mujahideen, a terror organization which is responsible for carrying out anti-India propaganda and multiple terror attacks on Indian soil, especially Jammu and Kashmir. He also heads the United Jihad Council and umbrella organization of several Pakistan-based terror outfits such as Lashkar-e-Taiba and jaish e muhammad Salahuddin is not only one of India's most wanted name, but also a specially designated global terrorist by the U.S. State Department. However, his anti-India designs received a major setback after the removal of Article 370, as Indian security forces successfully eliminated several park back terrorists in the valley. Extremely disturbed over the elimination of top commander of Hezbollah Mujahideen in Kashmir, Riaz Naiku, Salahuddin was also seen holding condolences meet for him in Rawalpindi, Pakistan. <laughs> لیکن دوست و بزرگوں یہ شہادتوں کا سلسلہ پہلے دن سے چلا آ رہا ہے صرف فسٹ جنوری دو ہزار بیس سے آج تک اسی مجاہدین اکرام جائے میں شہادت پہنچ کر چکے اور سب کے سب اعلیٰ تعلیم یافتہ تھے حضب کے علاوہ باقی برا تنظیموں سے بھی وابستہ تھے مجاہدین نے بھی حالیہ ہنوارہ راجوار کی کاروائے میں دشمن کا کمر توڑ دیا ہے لیکن گرم ریالٹی یہ ہے کہ اس وقت دشمن کا پلڈا باری ہے Sayyid Salahuddin has long been a key for Pakistan in its evil agenda of abating terrorism in India. He crossed into Pakistan from Kashmir in the early 90s to receive arms and training and since then he has been working in cahoots with Pakistan's inter-service intelligence in fueling militancy in Kashmir, training and arming youth before sending them back to the Kashmir Valley. Though Pakistan keeps denying this fact, a Pakistani document procured by Indian intelligence has yet again made the claim hollow. The document issued by Directorate of Intelligence of Pakistan government has itself accepted that Hezbul Mujahideen chief indeed works for ISI to facilitate terror activities in India. The document also mentions that Salahuddin is a bona fide official of the ISI and hence should not be unnecessarily stopped at security checkpoints. I would say that's a very strong piece of evidence which the Indian intelligence agencies have been able to uh, get their hands on to. And it's definite proof that uh, Sayyid Salahuddin is uh, working for the ISI. There's a certificate which has been given by the ISI 
with gives out his car number also so he, does, he doesn't have much of a problem in getting across uh, to the ISI premises or wherever he wants to travel and he's not searched more too much well Pakistan has been in the grey list of financial action task force since June 2018 and was given a warning in February this year to complete a 27 point action plan by June 2020 However, the FATF extended the June deadline till the next plenary meeting due to COVID-19 pandemic, which is likely to be held in October this year. FATF will analyze and verify Pakistan's progress to counter money laundering and terror financing and this new revelation about Sayyid Salahuddin and Pakistan's own admission of international terrorist Daoud Ibrahim staying in Karachi will certainly weaken its position in the eyes of FATF. We should try and, of course, uh, submit this evidence to the Financial Action Task Force, which is currently looking into Pakistan's role in uh, money laundering as also terrorist finance. And it's possible that they will be put on the blacklist in case things don't go quite right for them as far as the investigations are concerned. Though it must be remembered that the Financial Action Task Force, they only need three votes to stay away from the blacklist. One is assured China, the other two that they're looking for is Turkey and Malaysia. But notwithstanding that, this is a piece of evidence which is actually quite telling and might have some influence. It is not Salahuddin alone who enjoys VIP treatment from Pakistani establishment. It is estimated that Pakistan shelters around 130 UNSC sanctioned terrorists. It has also been brought out that Pakistan has provided access to these terror outfits to its banking system for carrying out nefarious terror activities in India and elsewhere. Despite being in the grey list of FATF, Pakistan has failed miserably in curbing terror funding. Hence, if it continues to finance terror outfits, the day is not far when it will be blacklisted for its support to terrorism, where it is possible that even allies like China will no longer be able to help to bail out Pakistan. Pakistan has been unrelenting in its support to anti-India elements. It has been financing secessionist endeavors all across the world to devise their sinister strategies. As it continues to exploit religious sentiments to incite extremism and terrorism across the world, its notorious spy agency ISI is using all tactics to misguide Sikh youths and instigate them against India with false and malicious propaganda. Our report. In the early 1980s and 1990s, India's Punjab state was a hot spot of Pakistan-sponsored terrorism. During those years, Khalistan movement was being endorsed to hype the demand for a separate Sikh state within India. Moreover, Sikh youths were being provided with arms and ammunition to carry out the illegitimate separatist activities. The Khalistan movement eventually faded away by the mid-1990s, but Pakistan since then has been providing shelter to Sikh separatists. It is using propaganda machineries to mislead the Sikhs all over the world for its anti-India campaigns. The recent arrest of two men in New Delhi, allegedly associated with Sikh militant organization Babbar Khalsa International, reveals how Pakistan continues to encourage Sikhs for violence. Arrested by the Delhi Police Special Cell, seven pistols, 45 live cartridges and two Android phones containing videos and photos related to the Khalistani movement were recovered from their possession. According to the police, they were conspiring to commit targeted killings in northern India on directions of Khalistani leaders sponsored by Pakistan's intelligence agency. Having failed to create chaos and mayhem in Jammu and Kashmir, Pakistan is now desperately trying to revive Sikh militancy in Punjab. The two Khalistan Babur Khalsa militants who have been arrested have clearly indicated that they were about to undertake large-scale killings in North, northern India to ensure that the Sikh youths get radicalized. In the Pakistani genes and DNA, there is absolute total hatred for India. And they will go flat out to 
try and destabilize India, to try and create chaos and mayhem in India, but they are not succeeding. Pakistan maintains a dual policy of promoting terrorism and hate among communities with an aim to propagate violence. Though India's northern Punjab state is prospering, the pro-Khalistan separatists settled abroad are making repeated attempts to grab the attention of the world Sikh community by indulging into violence. This man, Gurpatwant Singh Pannun, is said to be the organizer-in-chief of the anti-India rallies, propaganda in Europe and America. His organization, Sikhs for Justice, which has constantly been drumming fake Pakistani narratives, has already been banned by New Delhi. His teams, under the direct instructions from Islamabad, had also overworked to fuel and propagate the secessionist referendum 2020 agenda that sought a separate homeland for Sikhs from the sovereign territory of India. No, it's not 2020. This is a total ISI game. ISI is behind them. They are funding them. और जब 20 वाला ये पन्नू ये कह देता है कि चाइना ने जो कुछ हिंदुस्तान में जवानों के साथ हमारे किया है वो ठीक किया तो इसका मतलब हिंदुस्तान से तो पन्नू का मतलब ही कोई नहीं ये तो आईएसआई के सिर के ऊपर बातें कर रहा है और फंडिंग इकट्ठी कर रहा है को ना इसका बेस है और पन्नू जैसे लोग हिंदुस्तान में भी बड़े जो झूठी पब्लिसिटी लेने के लिए रोज नए-नए ड्रामे करते बहुत है लोग Owing to his illicit anti-India activities, the government of India ordered the attachment of properties of Pannun and has designated him as a terrorist under Section 51A of the Stringent Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. Failing to gather any traction, Pannun has grown both nervous and frustrated. The ISI-aided group Seeks for Justice called for a rail roko or rail strike protest in Punjab on September 13th to hamper the prevailing peace and order in India's Punjab state. Experts in India believe that none in the state would pay any heed to such attempts and as always, ISI's this campaign too will fall flat on its face. They want to convince the government of India as well as the government of Punjab that they still wield a lot of influence and they can radicalize the youth. In actuality, their influence is almost waned. But that notwithstanding, they have called for this rail loco agitation. I don't think this will succeed at all. Because of the COVID, there is hardly any rail movement. And secondly, Punjab of today is totally different than Punjab during the 80s and 90s. This present dispensation in Punjab is very strong and very clear as to what is needs to be done. Pakistani secessionists are mere cannon fodder for ISI, which sets and regulates the terms of engagement between two sides. Although huge force and money is being pushed in to destroy the youth and hamper peace in India, assertive vigilance and several crackdowns leading to multiple arrests have been able to contain the anti-India activities happening at the commands of Islamabad. Achieving long-lasting peace in Afghanistan remains a distant dream as the country continues to witness terror attacks targeting security forces, civilians as well as politicians. This time, a bombing in the Afghan capital targeted the convoy of the country's first vice president, Amrullah Saleh, who suffered minor injuries in the attack that killed 10 people and wounded at least 31. The attack on Saleh comes at a time when the Taliban is finally preparing to hold intra-Afghan negotiations in Qatar with the support of the United States. Over the past 19 years, Afghanistan has witnessed a number of policy experiments. US troops levels have surged and reduced, Taliban have been bombed and brought to the negotiating table, and now ample efforts to begin the dialogue between the Afghan government and the Taliban Several attempts are being made in the desperate bid to find a lasting solution to the Afghan problem. But the story in Afghanistan continues to remain the same. This week, a deadly roadside bomb targeted Afghanistan's first vice president, Amrullah Saleh. However, he escaped unharmed. And this is not the first attack on Saleh. 
as he has survived several assassination attempts, including one on his office last year that killed 20 people. امروز حوالی ساعت هفت صبح وقتی که به طرف کار خود می آمدم در منطقه تیمنی گذشته از جماعت خانه اسماعیلیه یک انفجار حولناک و محیب بالای کاروانای کاروان ما که می آمدیم قطار موترهای ما صورت گرفت یک تعداد از محافظین ما که مردان بسیار شجاع هستند زخم برداشتند که به شفاخانه امنیت انتقال شدند و به ما و فرزند جوانم عباد الله جان که در کنار ما بودند آسیب نرسیده کم سوختگی بسیار سطحی سر روی ما است و کم دست ما افگار شده به خاطر که موج بسیار قوی داشت Afghanistan has witnessed a dramatic increase in violence targeted not only at government officials in Afghan and allied forces operating in the country but also countless civilians people narrating horrific tales has become an everyday incident سودا می دادم در این سودا دادن یک گرم بس بسیار قوی شد که خواب بود گرد بود چره بود بسیار وضعیت خراب بود شیشه بود یعنی شیشه دکان چیز جور نموند مردم ها زخمی بود دیسو می دوید دیسو می دوید شیشه ها ریخت بسیار یک وضعیت خراب بود چره بود همی اشتکا ها بسیار اوگار شده بود گریان مکرد The grim situation of Afghanistan can hardly be fixed when the Taliban and their affiliated terrorist and criminal groups continue to enjoy safe havens and operational support in its neighborhood. Mr. Saleh has for long been a critic of the Pakistani military establishment and intelligence agencies. Incidentally, the recent attack comes two days after Saleh raised the Durand Line issue with Pakistan and said that Peshawar used to belong to Afghanistan. According to diplomats based in Kabul, the needle of suspicion for the attack on Saleh is towards the Haqqani network, an offshoot of the Taliban, backed by Pakistan's intelligence agency ISI. Sirajuddin Haqqani, head of the Haqqani network, is deputy leader and sword arm of Taliban. Such incidents have once again thrown the very idea of peace into question as contrary to their public declaration, neither the Taliban nor its sponsors in uniform in Pakistan are in the mood for any accommodation. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news and views from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at ani.com. This is Yeshi signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.